Okay. Okay, recording, John. Jimmy Burns, does President Fernandez have a point? I mean, is has Britain kind of uh, um, deliberately hotted up the crisis in the, in the South Atlantic for its own political ends? Well, I think those of us with, with any kind of sense of history, uh, you don't have to go very far back to recall that actually it was in 2007 when she and her husband, and they were sort of a duopoly in power because he was president, she was her vice president, then they swapped roles, she became president, he became vice president. But in 2007, they deliberately went out to derail a uh, political diplomatic process which uh, Britain and Argentina had been following uh, since the late uh, 80s, um, which was based on trying to sort of park the issue of sovereignty on both sides and then seeing what area of common ground there could be to just to try and diffuse the situation and get going on on practical issues. And there, both countries reached agreement on oil cooperation, on uh, fisheries cooperation, on communications between the mainland and the islands, which everyone, quite frankly, were quite happy with. Um, and then, you know, 2007 come along, and they unilaterally, I'm talking about the Kirchner-Fernandez tandem, uh, they unilaterally uh, scrap that. So, so that really, I would say, is the beginning of, of a new period in the relationships. I mean, clearly, in more recent times, and with the 30th anniversary coming up, um, Britain hasn't helped uh, by taking certain decisions that certainly domestically in Argentina have played out very negatively. Um, however hard it might seem to some uh, British people to understand, but sending uh, Prince William uh, to the islands, which must have been a decision taken right at the highest level within Whitehall and uh, negotiated between the palace and, uh, and the government and cabinet, um, it, it w was really a red rag to a bull. Um, you know, the, this is a sort of the symbol of the British crown, the, the symbol of British sovereignty. Uh, and, you know, dressed in, in military clothing, um, going to an island or islands uh, of disputed s sovereignty. Uh, so that was, I think, uh, a negative move, uh, move in, in my view. Um, it also didn't help uh, that, you know, we had the usual leaks about new military movements, frigates going in and out, um, you know, was a nuclear submarine being sent? Uh, and certainly Cameron publicly at one point coming out and accusing Argentina of being colonialist. Uh, I don't know who advised him to use that word or whether he just did it sort of quite spontaneously to provoke them. But I mean, clearly you can accuse Argentina of most things, but I don't think historically you can accuse them of being colonialist. Why does President Fernandez want to do this? Well, I mean, her detractors, and there are increasingly amount of them, uh, will say uh, that we're back in almost a deja vu territory. I mean, for those of us who recall the lead up to 1982, uh, I mean, after several years where things were going pretty well for her and her husband in economic terms, thanks to the high price of of commodities and, uh, and and Argentina managing to sell, particularly some of its soya at very high prices. Uh, it, it has had huge economic growth in recent years. Argentines generally have been doing pretty well. Uh, right across, uh, there's been poverty reduction. The middle classes have done pretty well. And she herself was, was re-elected with a 54% uh, majority on the back of that and also on a sympathy vote uh, of uh, of her husband. Um, th th since then, things have been going. The economy has been going down. Inflation is going up again. Commodity prices have been going down. She's been accused of of uh, not doing enough to restore the balance of trade, uh, and she's also accused of uh, building up almost a dual state. Um, people talk in Argentina. Her critics call it almost a sort of Putin-style dual state where you have the sort of facade of constitutional rule on the one hand with your Congress, your alleged free press, but in fact half the press is intimidated, the other half is controlled by the government or by private uh, individuals who are in the pockets of the government. 
And in this kind of climate, there, there is a, an increasingly a sort of sense of political unease, which all, I, I reckon is going to get is getting worse in anticipating the fact that next year she's reaching midterm, that she's not down for re-election, and that we're going to have a major internal political battle for the succession. So she is certainly in a more vulnerable place politically and economically than she was, say, three or four months ago. Um, this might well be a reason why she's hitting on, on, on an issue which still resonates among a majority of Argentines. That said, uh, her defenders will tell you uh, that this is an issue very close to her heart, genuinely close to her heart, because during the Falklands War, she and her husband lived in the south of Argentina. They weren't in Buenos Aires to that extent, slightly insulated from these islands which were being fought miles away. Uh, she was in an area which sent a lot of young conscripts to fight in that war. Uh, a lot of those conscripts didn't come back and she personally empathises a lot with, with the blood that was spilt on those islands. Um, and you know, as her biographer says, Las Marinas is an issue very close to her heart. Do you think that she would plan either a, a stunt or a, or a military operation against the islands? or? Is, is a military operation completely out? Well, John, you and I, who, who were then in 82, I mean, you know, one of the more striking things of, of, of Argentina today, certainly Buenos Aires, the center of the capital, is, is almost the total absence of the military. I mean, they've just disappeared from the scene. Uh, you know, the so-called unidentified uh, Ford Falcons who went around kidnapping people have gone from the streets. That 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 is, is just no longer part of the, of, of the immediate political landscape. Uh, the armed forces have had their budgets cut. A lot of the senior officers and middle ranking officers uh, who were involved in the so-called dirty war and then in the Falklands War have ended up in jail um, and remain in jail. Uh, there's been a huge purge of the high command. That said, uh, in Argentina, those of us who followed it for many years, I mean, uh, you know, the, the state does not control really in Argentina. We have these, as I've said before, that you have these sort of d d dual states going on. And there's always the possibility of some sort of lunatic fringe being egged on by this national, nationalist populist rhetoric, which the president is fueling, pulling off a stunt. Um, I mean, for instance, it's happened before. It happened before the... Uh, uh, the invasion of 1982 uh, during during the 70s, where you have a plane, a civilian plane, suddenly turning up uh, in Falklands airspace and 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 landing. I mean, actually calling the bluff because I mean, can you imagine a, a civilian plane uh, filled with Argentines coming from the Latin American continent, uh, given the support that Argentina is getting from Latin America at this point? Uh, I mean, I, I cannot imagine uh, that Mount Pleasant will shoot that plane down, uh, which begs the question, what happens if that plane lands uh, on Falklands territory and suddenly Argentines start pouring out, possibly waving Argentine flags, some of them doing something more than that, are some of them armed or not? How are our, our boys, our squaddies out there going to react to this? Uh, will there be a firefight? It's the kind of situation that could rapidly get out of control, and of course, diplomatically, I would I would say this is a uh, probably Fernandez would actually relish this because that would certainly put La Marina's way way up on the news agenda right round the world. Do you think that the the Foreign Office, the British Foreign Office, has um, really done as well as it ought to in? For instance, making sure that Britain has has support in the surrounding countries. I'm thinking, obviously, of Chile, Peru, Brazil, or has it has it failed? Do you think? Well, again, again it's it's a question of 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 kind of historical perspective on this. I I, I think um, I don't think I, I, I'm absolutely certain that that, that the UK, uh, particularly the Foreign Office, uh, lost the plot or took its eye off the ball, uh, you know, during uh, post uh, the attack on the Twin Towers and, you know, the declaration, of war, the US declaration of war on terrorism, uh, which, as, as you well know, took over uh, 
uh, big time I, the entire thrust of our, our diplomacy, uh, our defence priorities, our intelligence priorities right across the globe. Uh, Latin America from that point on uh, for several years I think was totally relegated. Uh, only the other day I was talking to a retired intelligence officer who was posted in in uh, Latin America straight after the Falklands who was complaining about how you know in Whitehall uh, during uh, during the last decade I mean Latin America simply had just gone out of of, of in-trays and out-trays. Um, and it's an interesting fact that our President Ambassador, who's on, on her way out because her term of office uh, is coming to an end, um, I mean, this was, uh, she's not only not a Foreign Office veteran, but this was her first ambassadorial posting. So one would sort of slightly begs the question, you know, is this really the way to treat a country that we uh, we went to war on uh, war with 30 years ago and where we are still in a, in a very uh, tricky diplomatic dispute. Um, having said that, I think uh, one can criticise the Cameron government on, on many fronts, but I would say that the one thing that they, they did say right from the outset, and I think Haig made this very clear, was that Latin America was going to become once again a priority of uh, British foreign policy. Uh, they didn't mention up front because we want to solve uh, the Malvinas or, or that we're going to hand the Falklands back to Argentina or even that this is the medium to long term game because that would be politically suicidal for any British government at this point. Uh, but they did state very clearly um, that, that you know Latin America is an emerging economic region. It is really the future and at a time when we're in a major economic financial crisis in old Europe, we can't afford not to trade with that area. And, and it's very much in our interest uh, to, to make sure that this Falklands issue uh, doesn't get to a point where it's so out of hand that it, it, it actually queers the pitch, you know, in the sense of, of making any progress in our diplomatic relations with other Latin American countries. And so far, uh, if we look at the record of the last five or six months, it seems that Fernandez, President Fernandez, has actually been uh, winning uh, because she's managed to get a certain element of Latin American solidarity around this issue, um, certainly in rhetorical terms and in diplomatic statements, uh, which uh, can make things more difficult for the islands, threatens the islands, gives them greater insecurity, uh, and complicates the matter for the Foreign Office. You know, ships that aren't allowed into Latin American ports, ban on imports into Latin into Argentina, uh, roll Navy uh, vessels, which somehow Peru suddenly turns around and says, we don't want you, and the ever-present threat of Chile cutting off its um, uh, air, air lift or air links to, to the islands, which of course uh, the islands are very dependent on. So altogether, I mean, it's not a, not been a good moment for foreign, for the British diplomacy. Has it? No, I I don't think it's it's been a great moment. Um, but on the other hand, it, it's it's not very easy uh, dealing uh, with a regime, and I do call it a regime like the one you have in power in in Argentina at the moment. Uh, this is a regime uh, that seems to have no medium or long-term strategy. It is very much uh, from week to week. Uh, it likes uh, great, uh, like the Spanish Argentines call golpe de efecto, which means almost coup, rhetorical coups that grab headlines, mobilize the masses. This is quite a toxic mix and, and quite potentially quite a dangerous one. Lovely. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Yes.